Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. Your latest film uh, that just got released a little bit ago, The Midnight Sky, how did you get involved with that in uh, George Clooney? It was, I got, my manager found the book. It was just this kind of little thing. He saw a book review on it and he sent it to me. And um, and I didn't read it for a long time. I was really busy. And I said, I don't think so and everything. And so I slipped it to my daughter and um, who she and I actually wrote a script together um, awesome. that's shooting summer. But, um, awesome. but so she sent it and she said, you need to read this because you're going to want to do it. And so, and she was right. So I, I read it and um, loved the characters, loved the, the setup. Um, and then knew I was going to change certain things again, kind of like we're talking about it. It was like, I, I grabbed hold of, of kind of a core there and then wanted to do my own thing with it. And, um, so I, I wrote the script we sold it to Netflix. Um, just the pitch. I didn't pitch luckily, but my producer's a really good talker. So he did it <laughs> and, um, sold it to Netflix. So I wrote it and then it, it came out. Okay. And we sent it, uh, we were looking for, directors but we were also thinking about the character of augustine and who we could get we kept thinking about Clooney, and we thought well who's a director that could you know that could get george and we we didn't think george, <laughs> george. Just wasn't like something that he would do you know? right. and, um, who he, could, he was, what's the director who could get george george yeah, george, george could george. get george yeah, <laughs> you know but um so we did yeah so we sent it, it it got to him more for the acting part of it and then he read it and said no but you know i'd really like to direct it so there were a few different directors that were trying to get it at that point, and we just loved the the Clooney package. So we 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 did that, and it came together like incredibly fast. And probably, God, three months after I wrote it, it was in pre production. It was like super fast. I mean, so. I remember when when George came out with his first when his first directorial film, the one about the the Gong Show guy, Confessions, Confessions of, of uh, Dangerous Mind. Uh, Dangerous yeah. Mind. Yeah. I was so blown away by know, his his. Sure by his take his his choices yeah. as a director he doesn't get as much credit for the directing because his persona and his acting yeah. is so that shadow is so large that the directing almost gets swallowed up but man is he an accomplished director man yeah, he really he's is so he does, good there's like an ease to it which i think is is sometimes people don't appreciate what the effort that goes into it also his acting as well you i know, mean it's just is amazing he yeah. makes it look so easy that it's it is um you know, he, he, it's not always appreciated. But um, yeah. and how is it? How is it collaborating with him? It was great. It was yeah. really great. I mean, it was it was nice because he he loved the script and he didn't he didn't want to do a lot to it. You know, mm -hmm. like some directors. And then he made some tweaks. Um, the biggest changes I think we ended up going because Felicity Jones turned out to be pregnant. She she wasn't pregnant when she was cast, and so the character, uh, her character Sully, was this kind of loner who never wanted a relationship and. Everything that we'd built was this idea that she was she was traveling to space and stuff, so she would never have to settle at home and actually have a relationship with another human being. Mm -hmm. So now suddenly we had our our character <laughs> who was that, and now she's pregnant. And it's like, wait, how's that happen? You know, Immacu so, immaculate con conception. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. In space. So <laughs> in space, a whole different movie. That's a whole so, other movie. Immaculate conception in space. Yeah, Somebody, I'm gonna go pitch that. Pitch yeah. that right now. We'll do that. That's ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody steal that, but it, um, so, and then, so George was in London when it happened and, and he goes, okay, we've got to make some changes. And I was over here in the States. And so he and Grant Hesloff, who they've written so much stuff together, I mean, nominated mm -hmm. for Oscars and stuff. So they know exactly what they're doing. So they ended up working in the pregnancy angle. I didn't, I didn't do that one. And so the stuff that happened on the ship changed a lot because it became so much more about her pregnancy because that was such a part of the story that other stuff that was kind of built in for conflict and everything kind of, we lost that. But, um, but it was a trade off in some ways because it was, it probably worked to some advantage because there was a, maybe a little more of an emotional thing because now it's like, you know, there's a child that you're kind of protecting for the future. Also, it's not just a bunch of adults on a, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. That's, I mean, you have had a heck of a ride so far, Mark, I have to say, uh, <laughs> no, and it's, it's fun because it's enabled, I just get to work with just the, this, the best, you know, this, right. the most, it's just really talented people. And it's like all these people that I kind of, you know, walk through just watching their films and stuff. And now to be able to actually kind of interact with them and stuff, it's, 
and work with them is really cool. I'm so incredibly lucky. Yeah, it's and and and, and that's why I was going to we, we were going to talk about earlier is there is a, a matter of luck for this. But the thing is, there's no question because there's a there's a thousand other screenwriters who are really good writers. Um, but the difference is, I feel with is luck helps once you've prepared for it. And once you, yeah. you you need to help it along, and then certain things, kind of like a character in a story, it starts to Miranda, but you've got to give it that that push, that fuel, yeah. and that's what's writing constantly and getting all those scripts out and and putting yourself out there, and that's when these things happen. Because if you don't write those scripts, there's chances of anyone knocking on your door and going, "Hey, can you write a script for Alejandro uh, yeah. and, and for no. George?" Like that doesn't yeah. work there's that way. There's not that much luck. Yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> No, I always took it like the old, you know, the old good fisherman, you know, good, good yes. fisherman throws a lot of lines, you know, yeah. and you know, you, you're not, you know, you're probably not going to get a bite with one, but if you throw out 10 or 12, you throw, cast out those many hooks, then you're, you just, your odds increase. And so it's luck, but it's also kind of perseverance and kind of, and just not never stopping, you know, it's never, like I said, if you, if you write one and then just hand it off and hope, you know, for the best and man, if I, you know, I should be lucky enough to get that. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen. You've got to, you've got to keep going because not only are you increasing your chances for luck, but you're increasing your chance. You're increasing your skill. You're getting better so that the, the fifth, sixth one is going to be better than the first one. No matter how much you love the first script, mm -hmm. the, the fifth one's always going to be better, you know? And so it, it's just the way it is. You, everybody gets better when they, you know, use their muscles. So. And then, and also, you know, work on a dude ranch, obviously. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Which, <laughs> It was one of the things that I, one of my early scripts was all on a dude ranch. And so, um, did that, uh, so did that get it, sold? Did that get sold? It got optioned. It, it did. It never got made or so. Yeah. So it did. So it, it was, um, but it is, it is one of those things that also helps to write what you know. Yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. Because, um, it's, it's one reason that I, I've always kind of stayed away from sci-fi. So I'm, I'm not, I don't really know. I don't love writing technology. Technology is, I've always found if I bring it into a story, I use it as a cheat. You know, it's like, I want people to have to deal with their own emotions and their own conflicts and their own stuff. And I don't want to have to be able to use technology to get them in and out of stuff. And I know other great writers smarter than me can use it well, but it was, um, even like on Star Trek, whenever I told, I told Quentin, it's, it's like, I, I'm not a Star Trek guy. You know, I'm not a big sci-fi guy. I know the characters and I like the relationships and all this. And I know about it, but he goes, don't worry about that. I'll take care of all the, you know, the big sci-fi stuff and everything. We just do that. And so, you kind of find what you know and you write what you know. Don't try, especially when you're starting out, don't try to try to write something that doesn't feel like a fit because it, if it feels clumsy, it's probably going to be clumsy at first, you know, just kind of build, build up to that. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to bulletproofscreenwriting.tv.